Oh, Shelley, what's a fella to do when he's got a cold? You've been in six saloons already, and if whiskey can cure a cold, you're cured. Well, what drives me to drink? You, you won't marry me. I told you why, but I won't never marry no actor. You won't never marry no actor. Is that plain English? It's plain, but it ain't English. I'm sorry I ever saw a showboat. My mother never wanted me to be an actress. <laughs> well, she got her wish. So you think I can't act? I'm too good for this troupe, and I'm too good for you. There, I give you my cash so money. Oh, that's the girl. Now, what would happen if I was to ask her for a little kiss? It would be without a veil. Oh, all right, without a veil. I never did like those things anyway. Oh, where are you going? I'm going to buy a spool of thread for partly. And don't you go into that saloon! As if I would do such a thing. Oh, hey, Frank. I'm glad I found you. Will you come with me to see the sheriff? There's something I want you to hear. Hey, Pete, what do you want to see the sheriff for? Well, you know it's a crime in this state for a white man to marry a coloured girl. Yeah, what of it? Well, you'll see what of it when I see the sheriff. There's a case of it right on the cock. Oh, you must be crazy. Oh, crazy am I? Look at this. And I got the proof. Julie! Yeah, passing herself off as a white woman. What, you ain't gonna do anything, are you? Yeah. My God, please, wouldn't you? Say, ain't you Mr. Vallon the sheriff? Yep, Vallon's the name. Well, can we go someplace private where we can talk? Yes, at your service, sir. Into the saloon? <laughs> Oh, you're bound to get to the wrong way, wrong way, you're bound to get to the wrong way. 
But let's get down to Act 3. That scene with the cows is the important one. Now, uh, we'll take it from where you went, get into it out. Uh, so, so, that long speech, remember, dear, I'm your sister, and if any harm should come to you, I'd never forgive myself. That's the cue. Get up. Got you? Got it? I know. I wonder what could be keeping Parson Brown. He promised to be here before dawn, and the twilight is fast fading into night. Uh, just a minute, Julie. Windy. I want you to watch these cues. There ain't any comical parts in this film, so you've got to take care of the props. Now, that fading into night is a light cue. You take it from Julie. It starts to dim down then. Yeah, I know. Then comes that long speech. I know it. Um, so and so and so and so. I love him with all my heart. So and so and so and so. Then I go up to the window. So and so and so and so and so. Then I go back to the bench. So. Yeah. That's it. Sit down on love, the most tender of all human sentiments. And so on, so on, so on. And with it, can it be he will not keep his tryst with me? Ah, keep, keep his tryst with me. That's the bell. Oh, uh, that's me, isn't it? Yeah, enter through the left there. Miss Lucy, I was absorbed in meditation and did not realize night had fallen. Oh, Hamilton, the days are getting shorter. But they are long when one is waiting. As I came across the fields, I saw your cattle being driven home by your faithful dog. Get that, Windy? Yeah, I get a cowbell. A cowbell? It ain't a cowbell. It says here, cows moo off stage. Now, have you got a moo effect? Oh, I can do that myself. <laughs> Sounds more like a cat than a cow. Try it again a bit lower. <laughs> oh, I bet you better use the bell. Miss Lucy, although I wear the garb of a parson, do you mind if I make a suggestion here, Captain? Well, I thought, as we were talking, that, that Frank could go by and peep in the window like this. You can't do it. Room's supposed to be on the second floor. How could Frank look in the window if it was on the second floor? I think I've got an idea anyway. Julie, let me study her part. I know every line. I know the business. You've forgotten if you ask me. You stick to your book, young lady. No play acting for you. Oh, here comes Miss Ellie now. Where's Frank? He's coming. He sent me ahead to give you a message, Joe. Come here. All right, Steve. As long as Frank's coming, we'll lead up to his entrance. Come on, Steve. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right. Um, Miss Lucy, although I wear the clothes... God! Guard of a parson, beneath these somber vestments, is the heart of a man that beats for you alone. Oh, Hamilton! They'll be up here in a minute. All right, embrace over, then what? Then what? <coughs> then I say... Prompter Nola. Hamilton, my own, my own. Oh, Papa, look at Julie! Hey, what's the matter? Julie's ill. Well, you'd better stop the earth and get a bit of rest before you're all right tonight. No, 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 I can't bear to know this one, I think. Well, they have fought Adams tomorrow. They're going to stand as we go. Won't be able to open their neither, and she's as sick as all that. I'll be all right tomorrow. She'll be all right when she gets out of this town. That's it. Oh, you won't be going to share by night, all right? No, 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 Seems that skunk beats up or something. Skinned out here an hour back. Snoop on town like possessed. Get that picture of Julie out of the frame on the left. I've seen it. I told you. Oh, kill him this time, Santa. Just step down and warn you. I see him. I see him. Steve coming along. He's coming along the left. Now, Val. balance the shark. She'll be here just along. Let him come aboard, I like him to pay. You know what I told you? Step right here. Yeah, what are you going to do with that knife? Stay away from your fool. I know what I'm doing. I ain't going to hurt her. Somebody go out and keep him away a minute. This won't hurt my story. Hi, Andy. Hello, Sheriff. Good evening, Captain Hawks. Are you the uh, owner of this here uh, showboat? Of course, of course I am. What do you want? 
Well, Captain, I've got bad news for you. Seems you've got a miscegenation case on board. What's he mean, Mama? How's that? A uh, case of a white man married to a black woman. Criminal offence in this state. Oh, no such thing on board my boat. Uh, information from headquarters. Name of the white man is uh, Steve Baker. Name of the coloured woman is uh, Judy Dozier. Which one's that? I'm Steve Baker. And this is my wife. Well, my information says that uh, you were born in Mississippi. Your father was white and your mama was black. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Well, you better get your things and come along with me. Say, you wouldn't call a man a white man that's got black blood in him, would you? No, I wouldn't. Not in this state. One drop of black blood in a man makes a man colored in this state. <laughs> well, I got more than a drop of black blood in me, and that's a fact. You went into a square for that in the court of law? I swear to any place. Why, look at all these folks here. Every one of them could swear I got black blood in me this minute. Yeah. That's how white I am. Well, I've seen fairer men than you that was colored, but you better tell that to the judge. <clears throat> Ike Valen. Guess you know me better part of 25 years. Yep. I was uh, killed both the time you was running around and barefoot on the landing. That's right. Well, now I'm telling you. Me. Windy McLean. That white man there's got her blood in. I'll take my oath for that. Well, there's anybody else but Windy, but I had this from, well, from somebody who ought to know. From who? From a funny faced river rat named Pete. And why? Because he was stuck on Judy there and she wouldn't have anything to do with him. That's right, Valor. The girl's telling the truth. Well, I guess I've got to take uh, Windy's word against this <laughs> other fella. You look a respectable woman. Oh, I am. Uh, oh, hmm. Well, now, do you all agree with what Windy just said? Uh, yes. Why, of course we do. Windy wouldn't tell a lie to save his own life. You know that, Sheriff. <coughs> True enough. Well, guess I'll take his word for it. But let me tell you this. Don't try and put the show on tonight with mixed blood in it. Or you'll be riding out of town on something that don't sit so easy as a boat. You need to look at us like that. Oh, 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 oh. worth a million dollars. <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> Frank, where have you been? Tell Frank what a fine troop is it. You mean Julie. 
No one affair it was with Pink when he told the sheriff. Yeah, Frank, well, Julia, Steve are leaving. Do you know anybody we can get in for Adams to jump into the lead? How about Frank? <laughs> A fine leading man he'd make with that face and false flat feet. I never asked to play a lead, did I? But if you're looking for a beauty, I got one. Who? There's this fellow I met in town last night. Seems he's got a lead tonight, and there ain't no boats. And he asked if we took passengers. Of course we don't take So I brought him along. He's waiting outside. There's a swell looking fellow. Well, bring him in. Let's have a look at him. There he is now, looking at the pictures. I'll bring him in. Hey, mister, will you come up here? Oh, it looks a swell to me. Oh, he looks, he looks like a river gambler to me. Yeah, but he's got sort of a manner. The girls are like him, Tarsley. I believe I'd take a chance on him. I? Where are you? You're one of the lunatic asylum. A big catcher of your hearts, Mr. Russell. Russell. Russell of the Tennessee, Russell. I thought, sir, that if I could have a bet on your boat tonight, I could pay for my bed tomorrow at four hours. I expect to remit him. Acting. Acting? Yeah, I've been an actor. I've been on the stage. Acting in little. Reading the two an hour a week. I'm fifty dollars a week. All things down to the time to think of art. Am I to understand, sir, that you're offering me the position of juvenile me? That's what he means. We don't like to put our passages off the walls, but we can't be too choosy just now. Madam, your courtesy is only exceeded by your personal charm. Ha ha ha! Come along, sir. You better take this job. It's only fifteen dollars a week. Everything's down. And a job to see that. Thanks. I've seen it. Oh, Papa, half an hour ago, Julie was my dearest friend. But she hasn't changed a bit to me. Of course not, no, sir. Then why are you sending her away? Come on. Come on. 